Welcome to 7 Trumpets Prepper. And in this video today, guys, I'm going to explain to you the difference between monocrystalline, polycrystalline, and thin film or thin film amorphous panels. That way you know exactly what you're getting into when you start to do a solar setup. So let's take a look at it now. Okay guys, now this first panel we're going to look at right here is a monocrystalline panel. Um, for those that are familiar with solar panels, you will find that this is one of those type panels that NASA has extensively used uh, throughout the history uh, of that organization uh, in the government. Um, the reason being is not only does the panel do well in extremely cold conditions, um, it doesn't do well in heated conditions that well. Uh, but it is very durable. Um, the only thing is it's a poor absorber of light. Um, the cost on it is quite high and though the one thing about it is the framework that is put around a monocrystalline panel um, it makes it very hard corn rugged. You can see up here where I beat the paint chips out of that. There's actually a huge dent in the bottom of this panel uh, around the framework. Um, as far as high heat goes it can endure high heat but the output as compared to the monocrystalline in a minute that we'll get into it's just not that high um, as far as uh, the monocrystalline being able to uh, stand up to heat um, now as far as the install cost goes this is actually low install cost because what you get into right here as you've seen in that video that i produced before about how to make a tripod mount for this you can see right here that these uh, mc4 cables and the junction box that's a standard feature on monocrystalline panels these days. So it's very easily just to plug and play and everything's ready to rock and roll out of the gate. Um, now as far as durability goes, right here's an example. As you can see right there, I mean I beat the framework up on this pretty heavily over time. Now monocrystalline panels um, are very available in the market today. If you go on eBay especially, you'll find that they're absolutely all over the place. The best monocrystalline panel, in my opinion, period, hands down, in the market, if you're going to buy one of these, is from Renogy. Uh, Renogy panels are extremely durable. They've stood the test of time for me. Now, with that said, um, as far as installing these, I'll get into the charge controller here in a minute. That's my recommendation to run these through, um, because a lot of preppers will run... Uh, 60 amps or less uh, for off-grid whether you're putting it on your RV whether you're putting it on your house a lot of people they keep it simple they keep it affordable and um, you know within the 60 amp range uh, Xantrex charge controller is a good one for that and I'll get to that further like I said in a second now um, what would you use this panel for you may ask well you would want to use this on an RV uh, on a camper I have a customer install coming up that I'm supposed to be filming and I'll uh, put that up whenever we get that done, but that would be a 900 watt install using these exact same type panels And that's what you'd want to use this for something that you're going to be off-road um, If you're going to set it up take it down a lot like I done with this on a tripod mount um, That's that's what you want to use those for that's in the ballpark um, of durability uh, if you're going to use this in a cold climate uh, Renogy panel a monocrystalline style panel and you can see how monocrystalline has these uh, corners cut off like so and it's dark black as opposed to a poly we'll look at in a minute it's a lightish blue um, kind of a dark blue tint to it that's that's another defining feature between them um, but anyway that's the applications that you'd want to use with the monocrystalline now as we move over here we see a polycrystalline panel now poly that means obviously there's more uh, you know like uh, as far as the silicone goes in the product um, now Monocrystalline has a high output um, as opposed to uh, uh, monocrystalline. There's a little higher output to it. Over the course of a year, the polys will put out more than the monos, and the reason being is that they just have a better tolerance to heat. Uh, and uh, not only that, but the, uh, the polys, um, as far as the configuration on the panel, they are a little bit larger space uh, as far as taking up space. Um, but at the end of the day, actually produce just a little bit more power uh, as opposed to its counterpart, the monocrystalline panel over here to the left. Now, the, the difference between them is that uh, really that polys have a higher peak efficiency than monos. And what I was getting at there is, just like I just said, is that it produces more power 
uh, over the course of the year. Plus, if you're in a hot environment, polycrystalline panels would be a great uh, asset for you as opposed to, you know, say you live in Alaska, uh, you'd want a monocrystalline panel. You live in Arizona, you'd want a poly. Um, that, you know, the temperature tolerance, um, it just it overall, and the, the greater output of electricity. Um, so what would you use this application for? Well, if you're going to be in a hot environment, obviously that would be a great idea. Um, if you're going to mount this on RV camper, tiny houses, things of that nature where it's going to get some flex and things up on your racking or if you're just direct mounting it with a um, L brackets, um, that, that's that's right there in the ballpark of what you'd want to use that for. Uh, matter of fact, let me pan up here um, and as you can see up there where that I was working on the greenhouse when I am actually pulled one of those panels off of the uh, mount to bring down here to show you today because I actually don't keep a lot of polys around. I've got plenty of mono and plenty of thin film but uh, poly is something I only have actually two panels of uh, as many solar panels as I have on the on the farm and stuff. So anyway that that's the what you'd want to use that for greenhousing uh, anything that's going to be exposed to a lot of heat uh, in and in over the course of time if you've got the space uh, between the two, it don't take up much more space. So that that right there is um, is really the differences between the two. There's really not that much variance, uh, in my personal opinion. You can read all sorts of articles online, but for uh, those of us that are preppers, homesteaders, you want to keep it simple. That's that's um, the bottom line on that, and that's pretty much what I explained um, at the Eastern Tennessee Preppers Meetup Group uh, the other day at uh, Bass Pro in Sevierville. Is just like, look, that that's really. Uh, where you're at with that. Now, let us move on over here. Now we are at the uh, thin film. Now there's two types of thin film uh, solar panels. There is the, the roll up kind that you can actually roll up and then there is thin film like this right here that as you can see up there there's like the Harbor Freight stuff and here's a much larger panel that you could probably say is in the ballpark um, of that style but now what this really boils down to is you have two pieces of glass and you have the very thin film uh, sandwiched between that and it comes out to the back to a junction box that I'll show you right here and I'll show you the output on this in just a minute is you can see right here that those strip comes together and goes into that junction box. Now it also has uh, some of these panels, you'll see the panel types, they already have racking channel uh, mounted onto it, so you could actually do the bolt through, slide through, or you can do this channel slide with the lockdown. Um, there's some versatility there. You can also, in another video I'll show you, you can take and get the uh, updated junction boxes and go on these type panels. You can run the hot lead in and the ground lead in as so to the bus bar and then you will come off the bus bar with your hot MC4 and your ground and I'll show you that as well right here so those would go into the lead and then drop out as a standard MC4 uh, modernized so I mean you have the options there um, uh, bringing those up to date or you can just uh, wire it as that I'll show you probably um, here very soon in a month or so uh, with my install because I'm going to be putting a 2.5 uh, K roughly a 2.5 K install on my home and here is the specs on those panel that panel in particular right there and it's UL listed and if you're interested in getting some of these and get you contact with Brian May um, he, he's now supplying these he's a supplier of those and um, anyway what is the great advantages of having uh, thin film solar panels well Number one is, as you can see, a shadow just went over right now because of clouds. These panels still put out power uh, for, uh, up to 40% more they can than a poly and a mono just because when a poly or a mono panel gets shadowed, they don't do so well. But this uh, particular panel right here, these thin films, will gather light uh, even whenever it's low light. And that's a huge advantage to those of us prepping because there's probably going to be times in the future uh, where there's going to be cloudy days. And there's going to be, I mean, just think about it. What if there was a nuclear disaster, or, you know, Yellowstone Blue, or, you know, the end of the days come, Trumpet 2, uh, asteroid hits the ocean, you know, throws all sorts of debris in there. I mean, there's just lots of factors you can take into account, uh, whatever the case may be. You know, these type panels right here continue to produce power uh, even under dark conditions. So, 
that is an option um, definite for preppers. Now the great thing about that top panel right there too is it's 48 volt. Um, so as opposed to these top panels like the mono and the poly where you usually get them in 12 or 24 volt, uh, right here these being 48 volt, you can hook these up for applications such as um, air conditioning because you'll need a lot of power input. Um, so if you have a 48 volt inverter uh, putting out, you know, 6,000 watts, 7,000 watt, um, you know, you've got a huge option with that. But the big thing is, um, as far as power draw, is if you're going to pump water. You know, a lot of the uh, water pump things are 48 volt. Um, so here's for that application, you'd already be up to that voltage in your system to run through the charge controller. Now, with all that said, a great charge controller, in my opinion, is Xantrex. Um, they make this in a different uh, style model. Uh, there's the 35, if you're only using 35 amp. Um, there is the C40 that is good for 12 volt, 24, or 48. So if you're not going over 40 amp, and the C60 is great for preppers that want to be in the 12, 24 volt range because uh, it's 60 amp. Now, in a future video you'll see from the Mount Prepper Expo, I'll actually be speaking, showing how to wire this particular box up. Um, but right here, I mean, it has a good heat dissipator, um, auto reset button on it. Very simplistic, um, just four screw terminals inside of it. And it's very useful for uh, using one of these type of panels. Now, I hope that's helpful to you as far as breaking down the differences and the applications for these. It, the, uh, the final notes I'd make on thin film is, this would be great for a ground mount to lay on the ground um, and feed a battery bank or sell power direct to your electric provider. Um, that's really what you want to do with that because uh, you don't want to be slapping that up where you're going to be getting a lot of movement, for example, like on a camper or something because you fissure the glass um, and then you damage your, uh, your film and then you're spent. So just some notes on that. I hope that's a help to those that have questions about solar uh, as far as the difference between the types of panel. Um, the thin film roll-ups are great for people that want to go camp and things like that, but most often they're in small applications. Uh, one last thing that just came to my mind before I close this video out is there is some new poly panels out on the market that, like I said, say I damaged that particular panel right there. Well, it's spent, right? Well, they've got some new 400, I think it's 430 watt panels that's coming out on the market now that they have an individual uh, diodes in it, I believe so that in essence, say somebody wanted to be petty and come by when the hard times come and shot your panels. Well, say they shoot two or three of these out, the rest of the configuration will work. So you might have lost 30 watts of power, but the other 400 watts will still be producing. So uh, there's all sorts of great things coming out now in the market for solar power and uh, is extremely helpful uh, for those trying to set up a system and have versatility. So I hope that answers all your questions. If you got any others, just post them in the video description below or in the comment section below the video description. I'll try to answer them the best I can. And until we see you again here at Seven Trumpets Prepper Channel, guys, I hope you have a most blessed day in Yahushua name.